In this video, I will give you an overview of the Orion Skyscanner 100mm Tabletop Reflector Telescope, which is very similar to other models like the Zumel Z100 and the Skywatcher Heritage 100P. If you are interested in these telescopes, you may find this review useful as well. If you want to buy this telescope or any of the accessories I mention, please check out the links in the description. They will help support this channel at no extra cost to you. The sky scanner comes in two versions, gray and burgundy. The gray version is model BL102 and the burgundy is model 10012. The gray one is usually about $20 cheaper and comes with a Barlow lens as a bonus. It also has the focuser on the side, which can be more comfortable than having it on the top, like with this burgundy version. The gray model has a longer focal length of 640 millimeters compared to 400 millimeters for the burgundy. Additionally, it allows you to adjust the primary mirror alignment, which is not possible with the burgundy model. However, I chose the burgundy model because it has a better mirror. The burgundy sky scanner has a parabolic mirror that gives sharper images than the spherical mirror of the gray model. Also, it can be mounted on a tripod, which is handy if you don't have a table or flat surface to put it on. If you still want a parabolic mirror, but don't like the top focuser of the burgundy version, consider the Zamel Z100 which is similar, but usually more expensive. You can find a link to it in the description below. An important thing to understand is that this is a very small telescope. That means it pulls in less light, which means the views you get won't be as impressive as what you can expect in a bigger telescope. Still, it may be a good choice for some people. It's small and easy to move around, making it a good option for the elderly or people with limited mobility. It's also affordable, so it's a good choice for anyone who isn't sure whether or not they will enjoy the hobby. The telescope is of high quality and comes at an affordable price. Experienced amateur astronomers can use it as a grab-and-go scope. It may also be a good option for children, but they should be supervised while using it, since it isn't a toy. This telescope uses mirrors that could be knocked out of alignment with rough treatment. This brings me to the topic of collimation. This is a reflector telescope that has two mirrors, a primary and a secondary. Collimation is the process of aligning the mirrors to bring light to its best focus. If what you can see through the telescope is very blurry despite focusing, it probably needs to be collimated. Only one of the mirrors in this burgundy telescope can be aligned, and that is the secondary mirror. The primary mirror is glued into place. This can be both a blessing and a curse. It can be good for beginners or casual users who only have to worry about aligning one mirror versus two. After all, collimation is a trial and error process that requires loosening and tightening screws until the mirrors are aligned. However, if the primary mirror gets knocked out of alignment, there is no easy way to fix it. So it's best to supervise children while using it to reduce the risk of that happening. If you want to see the process of collimating the telescope, I have a link to the manual in the description. This is a red dot finder scope. To use it, simply move your telescope while looking through the finder until the red dot is centered on your intended target. Once the dot covers the object you want to view, that is what you will see through the telescope eyepiece. You have to align it first, which is best done in the daytime. Unfortunately, I got a faulty finder scope that doesn't always turn on. Also, when it does turn on, the red dot is often very dim. 
And I bought this one from AliExpress that I got on sale for $9 with free shipping, which is a lot cheaper than similar finder scopes on Amazon. The red dot in this one is really bright. I have a link to it in the description if you aren't happy with the included finder scope. Now, obviously, this isn't being sold by Celestron on AliExpress. It is possible that the seller is sourcing from the same manufacturer as Celestron. Regardless, this is a purchase I'm very happy with so far. A question you may have is how much you can see with the included eyepieces. The included 20mm eyepiece provides 20 times magnification, and the 10mm provides 40 times magnification. These magnifications are really nice for scanning the sky, and if you live in an area with light pollution, you will see stars that can't be seen with the naked eye. I have spent some time scanning the sky with this at low power, and the views are stunning. Of course, most people buy telescopes because they want close-up views. The cheapest way to get close-up views is to get a 3x or 3x Barlow lens. A 3x Barlow lens will triple the magnification of an eyepiece. So that 10mm eyepiece that provides 40 times magnification would offer 120 times magnification with a 3x Barlow. This is by far the best way to get higher magnification without spending a lot of money. Before I got this telescope, I was unsure whether to get a regular Barlow lens or a short or shorty Barlow lens. Some online reviewers simply said to get a Barlow lens, while others said that regular Barlows wouldn't work and to get a shorty. I already have a Celestron Omni 2X Barlow lens that I decided to test before investing in a 3x Barlow. Unfortunately, it didn't work because the telescope wouldn't focus all the way. So I bought this Astromania 3x short focus Barlow, which works great. You can get cheaper Barlows than this, but they will give you lower quality views. This Astromania is good quality at a decent price. Even though the included eyepieces and a 3x Barlow are enough to get you started, you may want to consider upgrading the eyepieces at some point, because the ones included with most entry-level telescopes are pretty basic. However, if you have an entry-level telescope, there isn't much point buying very expensive eyepieces either. You can get these SV Bonnie eyepieces which cost about $35 each. They are an improvement over the included eyepieces because of their wider field of view. If you want to minimize your costs, though, the included eyepieces are good quality, so you really don't need to upgrade. If you want to buy more eyepieces, I recommend this magnification calculator on the Look at the Sky website. There is a link to it in the description. Enter the sky scanner's focal length of 400 and then enter different eyepiece sizes. And the calculator will let you know what magnification you will get without a Barlow and with either a 2x or a 3x Barlow. For example, with a 9mm eyepiece and a 3x Barlow, you would get a magnification of 133 times. This telescope has a maximum useful magnification of 200 times. It is important to note that the higher the magnification gets, the more the quality of what you are seeing degrades. The maximum magnification I have used with this telescope is 160x with a 3x Barlow and a 7.5mm eyepiece. I have only used this magnification to view the moon, and it looked amazing at 160x. The Skyscanner telescope is very convenient to use because it is small and light enough that you can carry it in one hand. It's easy to grab and take outside. However, before buying one, think about what you are going to put it on. Ideally, you want something like a stool that you can easily move around. While the tabletop mount is convenient, getting the telescope to the right height without a tripod may take some imagination. If you want to get a tripod, the base is threaded for a standard tripod mount. However, it needs a heavy-duty tripod. 
a regular camera tripod might be too light. You can also connect it to a mount like this one that came with my Celestron Popular Science Telescope. If you want to do some casual stargazing, the tabletop mount should hold you over for a while. And if you become serious about the hobby, you will likely want to get a bigger telescope. The Skyscanner telescope comes with a moon filter that can help cut down the glare from the moon. It also includes a tiny Allen wrench that you can use for collimation. Additionally, it comes with a moon map so you can go looking for specific features on the moon. If you decide to buy a Skyscanner or another beginner telescope, two really good books to go with it are 50 Things to See on the Moon and Turn Left at Orion, Hundreds of Night Sky Objects to See in a Home Telescope. I have links to both of these in the description. Turn Left at Orion is expensive on Amazon. Check eBay to see if you can get it at a lower price. A big downside of this telescope is that it can't be used for daytime viewing because it inverts whatever you were looking at. This means what you were looking at will be upside down. If you want a tiny telescope that shows things right side up, look into the Orion Star Max or the Orion Go Scope. I've only had this telescope for a few months and unfortunately due to the weather I haven't been able to use it very much. I hope to do another video at some point on what can actually be seen through the sky scanner. Depending on when you watch this, that video may be available. For now all I can really say is that the moon looks amazing, the Orion Nebula looks really good, although not as impressive as it does in my 100mm refractor and that sweeping the sky is breathtaking. I hope I have given you some idea of what to expect if you plan to buy this telescope.